Hey, it's Kate from Katie Did Rocks. We are at the 22nd Street Show and we decided we would do a little bit of focus on some faceted gems and minerals. And so I am here with my husband who's hiding behind me. And on the other side of the camera, we have Angry Turtle. Uh, do you have a name, Angry Turtle? Uh, I'm Steven. <laughs> Steven is actually a, a fellow who Jim has gotten to know online because they're part of the same faceting discord. And Steven has this fabulous booth of, of uh, cut gemstones. He was telling me these are called Christmas tree garnets because you can see it is both red and green. And they kind of, the colors fight for dominance. Does it ever look all red depending on the angle? Well, it, uh, on a dark background, you kind of maximize the red. And then if you hit it with blue light, the red really wins out. Oh yeah. If you put it against a white background, the green predominates. Yeah. So you can see we've got a split um, uh, tray here. And if you even just move one from one side to the other, the, uh, the color changes. That is really neat. Very cool. And this is some of those mounted. Yep. Really shows yeah. Natural untreated topaz. Holy cow. That is huge. Mm -hmm. It's and big. One. What's this one? This is iron doped lithium niobate, which is a type of hologram crystal. And it's possible to write data directly into the crystal lattice using a laser and to read it out using a laser. And one day, this might allow for incredibly dense data storage and replace your SSD. Wow. Microsoft's been working on this for several decades, so uh, don't hold your breath. <laughs> but eventually, we might have amazing crystal based technology in our computers. Wow, that's crazy. So, you do a lot of, of yag and like lab grown type stuff for mm -hmm. your crystals. Is, I heard that you were like maybe a, one of the experts on the whole yag thing. Well, we try. Um, we basically get whatever crystals are grown for use in science, medicine, and technology. Uh, yag gets used a lot, but there are others as well, different types of uh, sapphire, other varieties of garnet, um, even silicon carbide, also known as moissanite. Um, just uh, all sorts of different things. Plus there are really obscure ones like uh, lithium niobate, which- Oh, that's gorgeous though. It's got a crazy, you know, you don't even think about lithium or neo. Well, lithium maybe, but not niobium in your day to day life. But every cell phone has lithium niobate in it. That's why you don't have to pull out the antenna anymore. Wow. That's beautiful. And then is this the checkerboard faceted? Yep, just like that's how it's cut? Yep, that's an opposed bar or a pixel cut. That's, of course, House of Silas as well. Yep, that's, uh, that's good old Eric at House of Silas. Come Over here, we've got some fluorescent. Now, YAG is yttrium aluminum and garnet. Yep, yttrium aluminum garnet. And it is an artificial stone that Jim has used quite a bit in order to facet gems because it's less expensive than the natural stuff. And honestly, I think it's, in general, every bit is pretty. Probably the natural purists are going to not like that particular idea, but it comes in all kinds of different colors. You can have things like alexandrite that would be so expensive uh, if you were to buy it and and you can use an artificial lab grown stuff and have one that's almost almost the same so um, I'm it's I guess what I like about these is they, they do provide an alternative but unlike something that was grown just as a gem these have a story of their own like these guys these are yag so these were grown in the Soviet Union back in the 80s as, as far as we can tell, an experimental attempt to make a dual wavelength laser. So they put both erbium and neodymium in here. Um, just from looking at them, you can see the color is not even. Um, so and apparently as they were growing them, the two ions separated out. So oh my goodness. they had a lot of rejects. They ended up in a box in somebody's collection and we were able to get them. Um, and then how do they cut? They cut like a really pretty pink? Stone. Absolutely. They, um, They've got a beautiful orange to pink color Holy shirt. cow, look at this. Yep. That is amazing. Look at how beautiful that is. What's cool is that the, the so beauty is just kind of secondary to their purpose, but they, uh, the ones that don't quite, they're sort of like service dogs that wash out of training. They're still really good dogs, but they weren't suitable for the job. <laughs> well, and lucky for us, huh? Wow, I can't believe the sparkle in things. And then this dichroic moissanite mm -hmm. has two different colors. Yep. And you can see it's easier on a polished one like this. 
Um, down the length, it's yellow, and through the side, it's blue. And what you did when fastening it is orient it. 45 degrees, of, so it's right between those colors. So one side's yellow and one side's blue, just to take advantage of it. And then what is this? This is an entire crystal. It's very rare we get the whole ghoul. This is CTH YAG, and it's grown for use in lasers. And ideally, this is what they wanted to get out of them, is these laser rods. But this one ended up having bubbles running right down the middle, so they couldn't use it. Um, it's just a great one for far infrared lasers, um, sometimes used in medical equipment. So the green, the green is often from laser, laser usage. That's yeah, so, what they're. Yeah, it gets used a lot in lasers because it accepts a wide variety of ions, and it is durable and heat resistant, and relatively easy to grow. Um, so it, it is very popular. Um, if you trim this stuff up too, you can see it also happens to make beautiful. Uh, very rich green stuff. Now, do you have any of that that is? Unfortunately, I don't. It sells too fast. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go even more vivid. This is vanadium yag, and it's somehow an even punchier green. Yeah, it is. What is that? That is a complete laser yag crystal. Usually, we can only get the top of them because this part can't be used for lasers. You can see there's a bit of discoloration at the top. As these crystals first grow, the impurities come out, uh, are collected, and end up mostly in the tip. And this one also has two different dopants, neodymium and uh, cerium. So it takes about this much for them to get the impurities out and to get the two dopants mixed just right. And then here is where they would cut the laser rods out of. So this part is very, very expensive usually, and this part is what we can get. Uh, this time, though, this was an experimental one. And uh, the employee left the company and they don't really know what it is. So they weren't able to use it. <laughs> we were able to get our hands on the full crystal. And you can see where it, uh, it stops, it's just sort of a smooth bottom. Yeah. Which, uh, it can be smooth or it can be pointy depending on. But you can see, you can see the crystal in there for, in terms of being colored. You can see it's this beautiful green color. That is very cool. Now tell me a little bit about I know there's kind of a controversy about lab-grown crystals as opposed to natural crystals and what's better and what you should be doing. So obviously you're falling down on the YAG side of the argument, or at least you think they're fine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I love natural stones too. I study geology, so uh, uh, I put a lot of time into that. Uh, but these st stones kind of have their own story. Uh, it, it's a little different from, you know, just I grew it to be a gem. It's, well, you know, this was, a very odd material that was grown for use as a laser crystal. Zombie garden. Yeah, and it just happens to have this two truly bizarre yellow-green color, and it cuts a, a really unique stone. Um, but I think it just adds a, an element of fun that is, it's hard to have with natural rough. The, the other thing is natural rough is really expensive now. You, aren't, you end up not being free to cut it the way you want. Uh, it's almost a financial instrument on the top end. You have to worry about every carrot because it's costing you money if you lose it. But with this sort of stuff, you know, you can take a, a chunk like this and uh, it's not super expensive and you can just kind of play with it. You can cut it however you want. You don't have to worry about yield. And uh, at the end, you end up with a beautiful stone that does have a neat story. So what about people who are buying gemstones that are that are made from, from the lab-grown stuff obviously it's less expensive than the real thing for the most part yeah it's um, less expensive but it also provides a just a, a different alternative um a lot of people who are sort of tech-minded or science-minded really enjoy it and there's also a, a really nice green aspect to it um you know there's always the this debate between you know lab-grown diamonds and natural diamonds over uh, which one's greener because on the one hand they have to pull all the natural diamonds out of the ground on the other hand, they have to put a lot of electricity into the uh, lab-created diamonds. We kind of sidestep this because these are side products of civilization. If we want high-quality PET scanners, uh, good medical equipment in general, we want cell phones, uh, we want lasers. I mean, don't we all want lasers? We have to have these crystals, and it, this is just kind of a byproduct of that. So extra energy really isn't going into them to grow them. 
And these are just kind of the, the rejects that didn't work in the laser industry. Yeah. And you either get pieces that don't get spec like this bull, or you can also get the, um, the off cuts. So this is lutetium aluminum garnet or luag, and it's used in PET scanners. It's hyperfluorescent and can detect gamma rays. But um, the tops and the sides, since they're kind of in contact with the atmosphere, tend to uh, be less pure and they can't use them. So we have a deal with the grower where they take the center part, which is gonna go into medical equipment, but the tops and sides we get. And then we can repurpose these and it just makes everything a little bit more efficient. That's fantastic. So you must have a lot of contacts in the laser industry. We, uh, uh, we've been working really hard to meet as many people as we can. If you're in the laser industry and have crystals, please contact us. <laughs> uh, we've met some of the most amazing people across a wide variety of uh, from crystal growers to processors to equipment designers. Um, they're incredible people, a lot of fun to talk with, and uh, we get to learn all about these crazy crystals. That's fantastic. And you are Turtles Horde. You're Turtles Horde. And it's at turtleshorde.com. Mm -hmm. Angry Turtle Jewelry. Yep, on Instagram and TikTok. And why are you angry? Well, you know, <laughs> the turtle, you know, we like to say that they're, they're great deals you don't have to shell out for, but really he's angry because he got fossilized. Oh, wow, well, look at that. That is, I've never seen a fossilized turtle shell before. Yeah, it's just a reproduction, but still. <laughs> a resin? Uh, well, it's neat. carved. You know. Oh, cool. That's cooler, actually. Very nice. It's like, you don't have to shell out a bundle. Mm -hmm. It's cute. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Stephen, so much. This was really informative. You can see Turtles Horde and Angry Turtle Jewelry at the 22nd Street Show in Tucson at the 2024 Gem and Mineral Show. Thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed yourself and maybe learned something. I know I did. This is Kate from Katie Did. Keep on doing.